So my review of the X100 Pro may be late, but that's for a really good reason. There's a thing to be said about a device that gets sent to you for review and you never stop using it after the review is done. I've done some content on this device and I've been using it so much that I kind of forgot to make a review. So with that being said, I will say that in today's experience or in today's video that we're going to talk about, the X100 Pro has not stopped serving my needs for this channel, for creating content and actually covering events with it that it took me this long to put together a review. This is TK and this is my review of the Vivo X100 Pro, a Dimensity 9300 powered device that's ushering in a new photography era from Vivo. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. Now, before we go too far, this is the X100 Pro. There is one color only available right now on the international model. I realize that there is a Chinese version of this that has a different color, I think more of a bluish tint to it, but the international model got this starry effect version of it. I'll say this, that you can see all these little pixels in there. Let's get it focusing. All of these kind of just shimmer depending on how the light hits the device. We have Vivo in there. Obviously, I've got the Carl Zeiss in there. The camera stack that we have here is a triple 50 megapixel camera stack in the back. And of course, we have a 32 megapixel camera on the front. 120 hertz refresh rate, a 5400 milliampere battery, wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, and of course, all the capabilities, stereo speakers, uh, really nice functionalities, 5G, really good connectivity, of course. But as far as the box and what you get in there, you get the box itself, you get the device. Uh, they do include a case that does have the Vivo naming on the back. Unfortunately, it doesn't carry the same backing, but it does have a nice little textured grip so that you definitely not drop the device. And an opening for uh, obviously the dual tone LED flash that's positioned on the top right. Also included is a USB-C to C cable that you use with this beautiful included charger that allows us to charge this device super, super fast. It has a 120 watt charger that's included in the box. It is a USB-C to C cable, and that makes this device with the 5400 milliampere battery, one of the larger capacity batteries on the market that charges absolutely fast. Now, as far as the camera stack that we talked about here, we have the primary 50 megapixel one inch type sensor. We have a 50 megapixel telephoto lens and a 50 megapixel ultra wide. One of the big capabilities that we get here over last year is the processing power that we get with the Dimensity 9300 that's powering this. Now, as far as the display that we have in here, we have an in-display fingerprint sensor. And as you see there, super fast with the readout on this. Volume rocker, power button on the right side. We have a nice little side launcher here that enables us to kind of launch applications directly from there. We are running Android 14 out of the box. That's going to be really nice. A 32 megapixel camera in the front, as I mentioned. Uh, one thing to mention as well is that the wireless charging on this is up to 50 watts, which is definitely very good. So Funtouch 4 OS 14 is running on top of Android 14 that's going to be powering here. The processor is the Dimensity 9300, and of course, it's running at 3.25 gigahertz. Uh, we do have the V3 coprocessor here for image processing, 16 gigabytes of RAM and up to 16 gigabytes of additional RAM using the page swap system. And we also have 512 gigs of internal storage. Now, as far as the variance and how this device actually runs, uh, there is basically versions of it that'll have 12 gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of internal storage, all the way up to 16 gigs with two, well, one terabyte of storage. You can definitely see the different ranges as far as storage and get your RAM to be able to get the best experience that you want. Now I've been using it here on T-Mobile in the US. I'm getting 4G plus connectivity with voice over LTE. That's gonna be some of the best experiences I'm able to get here. And as far as speed tests, as you can see here, I'm able to clock in about 104 down. And this is again, depending on where you are and about 30 up which is actually considering the fact that this is an international model works really, really nice. And again, it seems like the Dimensity is definitely optimized to work on T-Mobile in the US. It's very nice. And of course, as far as Geekbench, let's go ahead and talk about scores. Now, of course, this is a 2200 uh, single score with 7252, obviously for multi-core. One thing to keep in mind, the architecture of the Dimensity 9400 giving us four prime cores as the main thing, obviously will give it its edge where we're looking at as far as the uh, multi-cores connectivity. Because what we get here with typical, let's say Qualcomm 8 Gen 3s is about 20 2200 roughly around for the single core again single core to single core uh, based on the same roughly about the same arm architecture we're not talking gpu performance when we get into the multi-core and you have four prime cores running at the same speed together running to be able to give you the best experience this is something where we go to 7252 from something around the 6600 on a, a gen 3. so definitely a performance increase in here and provides you that kind of window of what this is capable of doing for us as far as the actual general overall performance on this device, I've been using it again for literally over two months. I'm running Nova Prime on this. I installed my launcher. It works absolutely fantastic. It does everything that I wanted. All my gestures, all the functions work really good. The fingerprint sensor runs absolutely fantastic. It hasn't been an issue. And of course, the cameras. This is where we obviously, one of the big things about this device is the camera stack that we have. 
video on this obviously is going to be some of the best experiences what i've been using it the most uh, primarily focusing on auto focusing while in video color calibration color science and uh, the quickness of response and uh, as far as performance like if i'm moving from one subject to the other it works absolutely great now, obviously we have 8K recording at 24 frames per, or 30 frames per second, sorry. 4K 60 frames per second, of course, 1080p. And when we flip it to the front, we're pretty much capped at 1080p 60 frames per second. I'm not sure why, but I guess Vivo wants us to use the best sensors on the back. And I do agree with them. The back sensors, the main sensor, the 50 megapixel camera sensor there is gonna be the best performer and you're not going to be disappointed. Now, to show you guys that I actually, I'm not you know, giving you just a story here, you could see that I've been using this device. I have been using it since day one. And again, I got it around the holiday times because if we actually look around a little bit, some of the images that we have in here, it was around Christmas time that I actually got this device. So I've been using it since then. I've traveled with it. You could definitely see here some of the animals in there as well. But then when we start going further, further up and we start looking into the timeline that comes in closer in here, you could see here I'm not traveling. Um, I've also done some reviews with it um, on a scooter that I posted on the channel. Uh, going to Vegas, of course, covering the events there at CES as even doing one of my sponsored videos on the channel directly using this as the main camera and you could definitely see all the different experiences in here there's no question that this device has a massively well-balanced system to provide you the best images and of course the best audio experiences something has to be said about a device that becomes so useful that it moves beyond the standard functionality that we typically look for uh, on a smartphone again the camera stack that we have in here is literally some of the best technologies that vivo is able to put in there obviously mediatek is able to support and of course a lot of it is focused on the back of this device my hope is that you appreciate and you understand why i like this device so much and why i have taken this long to be able to give you guys my opinion and again, my recommendation. All the issues I had at the beginning with this device are all solved. The battery is fantastic, lasts all day, even more. Uh, charges up really fast with 120 uh, watts, which is something that you start taking advantage of and, of course, take for granted because you don't have to charge overnight. You leave your device the way you want it. You wake up in the morning and literally within 30 minutes, regardless of where you are on the, on the battery life on this, you're back to 100%. About a plane going off, uh, going off right behind us there, and of course, the experiences that we get here are again the best of what we get from Vivo for 2024. I hope that you are able to appreciate it and see the beauty that this device is able to create and capture with the lenses that we have in here. Now. I like to edit on device, I like to produce on device. So I've been using CapCut, I've been using uh, LumaFusion as far as my editing tools, but you can also see that I'm actually, I have all of my applications installed. This is not a, a just a review process. I downloaded and installed everything that I use. I think that really speaks to why I really appreciate the system and why I would recommend it to anybody. So one of the challenges that I had with this device at the beginning when I first received it was that I was having some issues with it. I actually thought I had a bad unit. Uh, one of the issues was a battery drain. It was a massive battery drain when I first got it and it just would not stop even though i was setting it up i thought maybe that was the cause that didn't go away and then there was that persistent uh, screen flickering that kind of kept going on and off and caused the device to never look or actually operate very much like a you'd expect it a brand new flagship Lo and behold, a couple of updates later, Vivo was able to not only fix those problems, but also improve a lot of the experiences on this. The cameras have gotten a lot better. And in fact, there actually is a software update waiting for me to install right now that will also optimize some of the experiences on this device. But I didn't want to wait too much longer because at the end of the day, this is about what does this device represent to me. So from my experience, and again, I hope that this translates to you very well. And as you're looking and seeing those images that I'm sharing with you guys, I use this device as a camera. I use it more so than a phone. I use it as a camera and a production tool, meaning producing content from it, capturing content from it uh, with it, and of course, making it into my videos, uh, using it with multiple devices. That's literally the main benefit of what we're doing here. And what I mean by this essentially is that at CES, I was covering a booth and I was working with two. We had the DSLR in one hand for shooting the A-roll, but all of my B-roll was shot directly with the X100 Pro. And the only reason why I didn't use both of them and it is because primarily the audio and video was synced out of the main camera so my sony camera captured that but the camera is so much heavier than a phone this device does so much in so little space the 512 gigs of internal storage make it so that i never have to worry about running out of space that's the big thing first and foremost and of course obviously the ram gives us the ability of being able to churn and cut video and produce video very very fast one of the biggest things I'll probably say if you're considering getting this in the US is make sure that it supports the bands in the area that you live in. 
In LA, for me on T-Mobile, it worked perfectly fine. 4G LTE or 4G plus as they show it on the actual device actually is pretty fast enough if you think about it. Yes, I'd love to be able to get a thousand plus, you know, down, but the 107 is 104, 107 is still no nothing to kind of go away from. But and the fact that it was able to go up to 30 up, that tells me that I can upload my content anywhere without having to worry about it. So from that aspect of what we're getting here, and of course with the Dimensity 9300, um, I'll also say that gaming obviously should not be any issue. I covered that in the first video, and the reason behind that is we have a quad prime core running on this, meaning anytime that you're trying to push things with it at the full potential, it churns it very quickly. It has four big guys doing the work, as opposed to some of the configurations that we see on the market where we have one main guy, and we obviously have more mid cores and then more efficiency cores. This architecture, the Dimensity 9300, does not have that. Uh, does the device overheat? No issues there. Uh, again, we're still using TSMC, 4 nanometer architecture. I think this is going to be the uh, jettison point for the next technologies that we see when we get to the 9400 and the 8 Gen 4s. Uh, Geekbench score, just as a point of reference, it's on par as we saw. Again, more performance on when we're getting into the multi-core because we have more prime cores. It's just mathematics for the most part there. But it actually does uh, show that when we're trying to churn and cut video and produce videos because it jumps over to those prime cores and and you're able to get to the job faster, reducing the amount of time you're actually doing the work, meaning the battery will last you even longer. Again, we do have a much larger battery than what we usually see. So with that being said, I'm hoping the images that I was just showing you guys with the videos that you guys enjoyed those, you know exactly how much I like this. This device is an easy recommendation for anybody looking to create content. If that's the main focus is what you're getting out of this device. Uh, it's fast, it's great as far as uh, productivity, daily activity, and as far, as far as basically just creating from it, it is essential for what I do that it took me this long to be able to put a video to tell you that it's essential for me. I don't know. It, I'm, I'm going to try to do better, obviously, in the future, but in the last three to four years of me going to CES, I have covered that event with a Vivo. So the Dimensity is knocking out of the park. Vivo has an absolute winner on their hands. Let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of the X100 Pro? Have you picked it up? Are you still using it or are you considering it? Now that we've seen some of the other devices that are coming out for 2024, obviously there's more to come, but at least now we have more players on the field and the decision should be a little bit uh, made with more understanding of what the focus of the device that you're getting needs to be. This is TK, I'll see you in the next video.